This is the lecture video for the first part of the nervous system notes, part one, dealing with uh, nervous tissue in general and how the nervous system is organized. So looking at this picture here, we see that the central nervous system is made up of the brain and spinal cord, and all of the other structures we see shown in purple and yellow are the nerves which make up the peripheral nervous system. So in the next series of notes quite a bit of uh, material is going to be covered and we'll be talking about structure and function of the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system and how the two work together to give us information from inside and outside of our bodies to allow us to maintain homeostasis. So the components of the nervous system, specific organs within the nervous system, include the brain, spinal cord, and nerves. And some of these nerves are modified to become sensory receptors. So these receptors are bringing in information such as light, temperature, sound, pressure, touch, pain, and so on. So those are specific stimuli that are received into the nervous system and we respond accordingly. So what the nervous system is, its basic functions, what it's responsible for is to perceive sensations from inside and outside the body, perform mental activities like critical thinking, memory, speech, stimulating muscle movements, so allowing us to volunteer, voluntarily control our skeletal muscle, as well as involuntary Muscle, muscle control such as when we're digesting food and moving things through the digestive tract as well as breathing. And then controlling secretions of many glands. Together the nervous system works with the endocrine system to make sure we have the correct amount of hormones or neurotransmitters being released to main, again maintain homeostasis. So when you talk about the nervous system the two general divisions are the central nervous system which we said includes the brain and spinal cord and the peripheral nervous system that includes the nerves. So here we can see the brain and spinal cord make up the central nervous system and you can see in yellow here are the nerves of the peripheral nervous system. So any of the nerves that extend from the spinal cord outside of the brain are called spinal nerves and those nerves that extend off the brain itself we call cranial nerves. But either way the cranial nerves and the spinal nerves make up the peripheral nervous system. They're essentially the highway bringing information to and from the central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord. So if you think about how information is relayed through our nervous system, we have stimuli outside the body, could be inside the body as well, but this example shows something outside the body. Here the person sees a glass of water, so that information, that visual information comes in through the sensory neurons in the eye and goes to the brain. So this division, the sensory pathway here that goes into the central nervous system, we call that the sensory or afferent pathway. So we spell that A-F-F-E-R-E-N-T, afferent pathway, is information coming into the central nervous system. And then this neuron represents those neurons that are present within the brain and spinal cord that are transmitting that information, receiving it, deciding if a decision needs to be made and if there is an adjustment or some response required by the body, that information is sent to the next neuron in series, which is the motor neuron, which will control some activity uh, which will elicit a response from the body. So this red arrow is the motor or efferent response, E-F-F-E-R-N-T, I'm sorry, E, yeah, E-F-F-E-R-E-N-T, efferent. So this is the sensory afferent pathway, this is the motor efferent pathway, the response. So this is information coming in, this is the input, and this is the output or the response by the body to that information that we see. So here a person might be thirsty, so the response is to lift up the glass and take a drink. So when we look at the nervous systems, lots and lots of different divisions. So we talked about the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system as the two major divisions. Notice blue represents information coming into the nervous system and the red arrow indicates information going out of the nervous system. So you look at the peripheral nervous system which makes up the spinal and cranial nerves, we can see that brings information to the central nervous system and then also information is carried out from the central nervous system through the nerves. Then we can see here kind of a similar 
um, breakdown here, we have information coming in. Again, that's called the sensory or afferent division. So that's referring to this blue arrow here is sensory afferent. And the red is motor efferent. Again, looking at this output of information from the nervous system. So again, what makes up the peripheral nervous system are nerves. So nerves are what extend away from the brain, brain and spinal cord and information is going to and from those nerves. So if we look at the response from the body, we call that the motor or efferent response. There's two different divisions of that response. If that response is controlling voluntary, is a voluntarily uh, controlled response, which means looking at skeletal muscles, we call that the somatic nervous system or the somatic motor response. So somatic, when you hear the word somatic, I want you to think voluntary skeletal muscles are responding to some input. So anytime we move our body voluntarily, we call that a somatic motor response because it's skeletal muscles that are responding. The other type of response that we might see coming from the body would be an autonomic response, which means we're looking at involuntarily controlled responses. For example, when the pupils of your, um, when the iris of your eye, for example, when it dilates, it opens up your pupil. So we say your pupil is dilated, and that happens in dark conditions. That re that motor response would be an autonomic response because it's not within our voluntary control. It happens automatically, and many of these are protective in nature and helps us to maintain homeostasis. When you're going up the steps to come to class and your heart muscle beats a little faster, again, that would be an autonomic response because we can't control our heart rate. Some people can do meditation and things, but overall, these things occur without our awareness, and that's an autonomic response. So anytime we talk about an autonomic response, we're looking at smooth muscle, cardiac muscle, and glands. These are all structures that we don't have direct voluntary control over. So we call that the autonomic, those are part of the autonomic nervous system. Again, somatic nervous system we do have control over, and that includes skeletal muscles. So if you're going to highlight something, in each of these boxes I would highlight skeletal muscles and I would highlight voluntary and under autonomic it would be involuntary and then you would highlight cardiac muscles, smooth muscle, and glands. So that involuntary response from the body can go one of two major routes. If it acts in a stressful situation where it revs up the body for activity we call that the sympathetic response part of the sympathetic division and then the parasympathetic is the uh, one that slows us down allows us to digest our food we call it the rest and digest division and this is the fight or flight division so this involuntary motor response can be either revving up or slowing down of those, again, cardiac muscles, smooth muscle, and glands. And we'll have a, a whole lecture on the autonomic nervous system, so it's not important that you know the details of this right now, just that you know that it is a response that is from cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, and or glands. So here again, we see the different um, nerves shown in blue and red. Blue means it's bringing information in. So this would be a sensory neuron bringing information into the spinal cord about something going on in the skin. This too would be a sensory neuron bringing information in, maybe from stretch of the stomach. For example, if someone just got done eating, the stomach would be very stretched, and that information would be passed to the spinal cord to tell us that we don't need to eat anymore. Again, motor response, this is a somatic motor response, so this would be information leaving the spinal cord to control voluntary skeletal muscle. And here is uh, a sympathetic motor response um, from the autonomic nervous system acting on cardiac muscle. And if it's sympathetic, that means it probably is going to increase the heart rate, increase the force of contraction, because we know the sympathetic nervous system is the fight or flight, and that would cause this information would cause this heart to increase its activity. The parasympathetic nervous system is the rest and digest, and this again is motor output going to an, another involuntary structure, which would be the smooth muscle of the bladder, and in this case it might cause contraction of the bladder to allow us to urinate. So as we can see, there's everything, um, all these structures and all these divisions work together to maintain homeostasis.